In today's episode, we're speaking to Lauren Goldstein. Lauren is a founder and CEO of award-winning and globally recognized business consulting firm, Golden Key Partnership. Her clients lovingly call her the Biz Doctor, which also happens to be the name of a podcast. Her superpower is helping seven-figure service-based entrepreneurs uncover what is keeping them stuck in the trenches of their business so they can have more freedom, impact, success, and happier teams and can breathe a much-needed sign for lead. She's been featured in Thrive Global, Global, Half Post, having to having done post, Authority Magazine, and is the trusted expert to Fortune 500 companies like Apple, Nike, AT&T, amongst others. Let's speak to Laura and find out how she changed her life by changing her mindset. Let's find out. Welcome, welcome. This is Girl Khan, your money mindset expert. And today I'm so excited. We're speaking to the beautiful, the wonderful, the charming Lauren Goldstein. Welcome, Lauren. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to speak to you, Lauren, as well. Lauren, everyone's heard your intro. They know how fabulous you are, but please, in your own words, tell everybody what it is that you do. Mm. So my clients lovingly nicknamed me the biz doctor years ago because my passion is helping service-based business owners get out from underneath their business so they can have true entrepreneurial freedom with the right operations and team. Wonderful, wonderful. So Lauren, talk us through your journey. I mean, you have so many accolades to your name and this there's a whole list of achievements, but you know, talk us through how did it all start for you? How do you end up being here? Hmm. It is a very juicy story. Uh, So I'll go back to the very beginning. So I actually, in my former life, I was in the medical field. That was actually what I really thought I would be doing. I I don't know if I have any fellow planners, OCDers that are listening, but I thought I had my whole life planned. You know, I'd go to this school, then go to med school, then graduate, have matching Land Rovers and and Labradors with my husband, the white picket fence, the whole thing. Um, and then it it actually took quite a turn. So I was in pediatric neurology and epilepsy research. And uh, we had a little baby come in that we treated. And then I had a very jarring experience where I realized that insurance companies dictate patient care instead of doctors. Mm. And I just, I just knew in that moment that I would be handcuffed to the way that Western medicine is run in the United States. And so I said... There's got to be something more and there's got to be something where I can have a bigger impact. I don't know what that is, but it is no longer in the medical field. So I left, which is saying a lot because my entire identity was wrapped around being a doctor. Yeah. I'd known it for so long. And so I felt like a cork in an ocean, just floating along, trying to find this new identity of who I was. And I remember a very emotional morning. I was, I was crying into my grits, if you will, uh, with my mentor and, you know, he just said, I hear you. I know this is challenging, but I've been thinking about this a lot. And I really think you should be a consultant. And back 12 years ago, when I started, that was a big thing to be an independent consultant. Like nobody was an independent consultant here in America. We had the big four that you worked for. So going out on your own was not something anybody really did. So I said, Gene, you're crazy. Why, why would I do that? And he said, because smart business owners know that you oftentimes need that unbiased third party to come in and show Mm -hmm. your, your, your blind spots, help you see where you're stuck, help you see where you're trapped. And he said, just like the way you diagnose tiny humans, you can do the same for businesses. And so I said, what the heck? I got nothing to lose. And there was a lot of failing forward, Mm -hmm. but I'm very grateful that I was courageous enough to go against the grain and um, start an entrepreneurial path. But but going from being a doctor to being a business consultant, I mean, there are poles apart. And I, I, I know that because I mean, I'm a lawyer and then I went into entrepreneurship, there's loads of skills that you can transfer from one profession to the other, hands down. Absolutely, I agree with that. So I don't, I don't doubt why you're so successful, but they are very different, you know, you know they're, they're, they're very different professions. How do you, how did you even, you know, acknowledge the fact that I mean, once, oh, let me acknowledge something else. 
having an identity associated with your profession is something that we all professionals, especially middle-class professionals do, okay? Because the, the harder you work for a profession, the more ingrained that that I, that profession is, is with the identity. So for the longest time, I was just a lawyer. I was a lawyer. I was a lawyer before I was a woman, before I was a mother, before I was anything. I was a lawyer. Who are you? I'm a lawyer. So yep. I understand that, that issue with the identity. But more so to be, you know, to go, if I, as a lawyer, went on to become a consultant, and I did, I suppose, in a way, it's it's a jump but yours is even greater because it's a complete different um arena and and um i'll ask you the next question about money in a bit but how did you even allow yourself or or overcome the imposter syndrome overcome the the self doubt to take the plunge mm, yes uh well quick fact check i did not actually become a, a full doctor so just just to work clear i'm not an md um but I feel like actually the jump is smaller than you think, because Mm -hmm. as doctors, what we're really good at is reading between the lines, looking at symptoms, checking Mm -hmm. pulses, checking vitals. And so much of what I do as either fractional COO or business advisor slash consultant is looking at the symptoms, checking vitals, understanding that what you think is the symptom is Mm -hmm just a base, just a baseline symptom. And there's always a root cause underneath. So it was definitely night and day for sure. And I'll be very honest. I think I don't, I don't think there will ever be a day when I don't have some sort of imposter syndrome going on. And I think that's, you know, I've started to think of that as healthy because I recognize that I don't know everything. I know a heck of a lot. I've been doing this for 12 years. Mm. I've got I've got it down, but there will always be people that are, have more knowledge than me about something or are more Mm -hmm. successful or something like that. And so for me, I think it just became about really understanding why I was doing something and that it wasn't necessarily how much I knew it was how much I could make something simple that was is very complicated and overwhelming and help my business owner clients see where they're, where they're not set up for success. Okay. That makes complete sense. Mm-hmm. And it makes, it makes sense to me, maybe to use well in hindsight, I'm just thinking of the, the, the 12, you know, years ago version of you taking the plunge. How did you talk to yourself? How did you work on your mindset? Cause mindset plays a big role in, in any, any, you know, success in any profession how did you change your mindset how did you work on your mindset what did you say to yourself or do do, what did the mentor say to you to enable you to have the confidence to take the plunge Mm. well I think two things um really helped me one I had really great mentors who helped me see what was in store for me so Mm -hmm. I had the positivity of, of where I was going I also come from a line of entrepreneurs. So uh-huh. it wasn't that from unfamiliar for me. Actually, I was a little more outside the realm because um, my grandparents had both had business. My dad had a business that my mom worked in. So it wasn't such a huge like wake up call to, because mm-hmm. I knew what it was like to have a business. But I will say that there is a very big mindset shift when you go from being part of something to being like the sole reliant party Mm. because you know I could call in sick and there'd still be other people on the floor in the lab doing exactly research like it wouldn't it wouldn't really impact but when I made the shift to you know I mean this is graphic but eat what you kill and like it's Mm. me at the end of the day um that was really where I had to learn to to play team in a different way, play to win in a different way, um, not listen to my itty bitty shitty committee that's <laughs> telling me this is never going to work or this is too hard. Um, and I just was voracious in my appetite for personal development. Like I hired one of Tony Robbins coaches. I read a personal development or business book or two every single month was just going to all sorts of leadership conferences, business conferences, because I knew that I needed to get a real life MBA very, very quickly. Mm. And that, 
I really want to emphasize that you took personal responsibility for working on your mindset. Yeah, the mm -hmm. strategies and the skills, you already have them down anyway. I, I think the universe doesn't give you a desire for something without giving you, without equipping you with the requ requisite skills and talents. But we often don't move forward in those directions or, you know, or, or think about fulfilling our desires because we are too afraid of, you know, of what we what we want. But you went ahead and worked on the most important aspect, which is your mindset. So you changed your mindset. And I love the fact that you went out and got a mentor and you also began to read books about personal development, about, about the skills required, business and leadership, et cetera. And the cumulative effect of all of that was the fact that you ended up having the self-confidence to be able to do it and you know do the do you know step into a business for yourself and actually help and have the amazing results that you have for your clients everything mm -hmm. starts with you and you taking personal responsibility so here's my next question i mean i know it's probably a little bit easier for you because your parents are entrepreneurs and your grandparents are entrepreneurs but often the issue is when you go from employment into entrepreneurship money becomes a big issue because we as as employees we, we you know we we just discuss with hr our salaries and that's usually yeah. gauged by you know what experience we have where you know which company it is so this the, the external environment sets those you know those those standards for us and we just have this two parameters we know and so some most people go in the middle but when you're an entrepreneur the money belongs to you you decide you set your bar so how did you work on your money mindset mm. That is a great question. So this is something, well, there's two parts to this. So first, I think mindset is not something that you can just set it and forget it. Like if you read this book, yeah. you're- Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> like, Constantly, constant work in progress. I have yeah, to be 100%. Exactly. So it's like something that you, you constantly have to stay on top of and be just a really great observer of your thoughts. And it is something that I have not still not perfected, but I am light years ahead. And so my money mindset, I think was perhaps the hardest mindset shift, not because I couldn't ask for the money, but because I felt so unworthy of the money. Yeah, And I felt unworthy, not because I didn't think that I had value or I didn't think I did great work. I, I felt unworthy because it was so easy for me. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, this is so easy for me. Surely everybody knows how to build operations that run like a high performing business and mm -hmm. know how to have the best team for them. Like this, I, are you sure I should be charging as much as I am to do this? And so it took a lot of, of, um, positive evidence locker stuff where, you know, I'd have a, an incident and I'd say, oh, let's put this in the evidence locker of, of why I do what I do, uh, to really get past the feeling of just because it's easy for me, doesn't mean I need to charge less or that it isn't as valuable. In fact, that's how you know that you're doing something that really is valuable. That is your skill set, your unique ability, and that is making an impact. 100%. I think when you just because you find something easy doesn't mean it is easy. It's just you that's when you are leaning into your natural ability, your your passions and your talent. And therefore, mm -hmm. it's easy. I mean, I, I mean, I'm very good at maths. I always have been. And there are people when I look at their that, you know, they normally remember school or something. I was terrible at art. I just was so rubbish at art. And even drawing stick diagrams was like a mission for me, right? So when I see these amazing, you know, drawings, amazing paintings, even like for 14, 15 year olds, right? Forget the professionals, even the 14, 15 year olds. I'm always like flabbergasted. I'm like, how do you do this? This is so amazing. And they're like, easy. And then I will have a complex, you know, calculus, you know, calculation. I did double A of math. So really, I didn't do a degree, but I could have easily done that as well. And they're like, how? I'm like, it's easy. And so it's, it's yeah. whatever you have passion for and you have your your natural talents and abilities you know, are, are sort of leaning towards, you find easy, but it's not easy for everybody else. And this is a concept that I think far too many women more than men have to mm. acknowledge. I think we as women, we become so good at so many multiple, we, you know, we are multi-talented. So we, we're so good at so many things. Well, doesn't everyone do this? Doesn't everyone know how to do this? No, you you are unique and you have this ability. And especially because we are women, we have the ability to sort of 
get the bird's eye view and get the large vision so I'm not surprised how amazing you are because you're you know you're being feminine that sort of naturally leads into this amazing talent that we have we all we always underplay ourselves because we think everyone's good at this this is a normal thing but Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. when we understand that because we are talented does and it's something's easy for us it doesn't mean that we have to charge less it means we have to charge more exactly what you just said but coming to that realization can take years if not decades Mm -hmm. and far Mm -hmm. too many women are still in the you know in, are stuck in that rut when they're like well this is easy or this is normal everyone does it and I'm going to give you a small example for this and that's cooking a lot of women or a lot of men and women actually nowadays cook but a lot of women cook and they just assume well all women cook isn't it easy well no <laughs> it's not easy no. and and you know you have a special talent and um, so I'm just as one example because especially I know that a lot of you know uh, women are and, and they and they had the corporate craze along with cooking so Again, no, yeah. it's not, yeah. not easy, right? Um, not. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give to someone, I mean, be a man or a, a woman listening to this, because we have both genders who do listen, who are currently in corporate professions, so they're highly, highly intelligent and they've, and they've got all these achievements under the belt, but somehow they shortchange themselves, they doubt themselves that, you know, I'm not sure I can run a successful business. I'm not sure I can be an entrepreneur. I'm not sure... I have the skills required to run a successful business or, or have the money. So, you know, it'll basically letting the fears overcome their, um, you know, you know, hold them, will help them have, have their fears, hold them in procrastination. What advice would you have for someone like that? Mm. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> I would say if I could do it all over again, I would actually build my business as a side hustle before I left corporate America. Mm. Um, and I think the reason, I mean, there's a couple of reasons, hindsight's always 2020, but yeah. a few reasons is when you're able to have that runway, that safety net, whether it's your job, whether you've got great investments, whatever it is where your business is not like cutthroat in the way of like, if you, if you don't sell this client tomorrow, you can't pay rent. Um, then you're able to actually be in the experience of building a business because Mm -hmm. a lot of times where I've seen business owners get in trouble is they don't have the cash flow, they don't have the reserves to really launch and learn because that's a lot of what the first year is. Like, mm-hmm. I think I can solve this problem. I think this is my market. I think this is the service. I'm going to test it and keep iterating until I get it right. And if you don't have enough space financially to do that iteration, then I see a lot of things that ends up keeping people trapped and that's where they're taking clients that maybe aren't a good fit for you or doing services that maybe you really don't want to do but you said yes to because you've got the bills to pay and it and I think when you don't have the the runway to do it right and like really figure out things in the beginning then it can set you back a lot because you're doing things that you probably wouldn't normally say yes to yeah. And that's, and that's like part of the pricing, right? Is once you get past the first few years, like a, my pricing isn't based on how many hours it would take me to do something. I'm very efficient. I've been doing this a long time, right? It's based on the 12 years of experience and yeah. knowledge that I have. And so, you know, if you're sitting in corporate America and you're like, you know, I'd really like to cut my teeth as an entrepreneur, or a business owner, I say, go for it. And don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, like go test it, go see if it is what you want. Because the thing that I would hate to have happen is you give up something that's working, that you enjoy, that you're good at for something you're unsure about. And then you find out that you actually don't want to be a business owner. Cause that's okay. If you don't want to be, that's fine. Um, just make sure you have a plan B. hundred percent. I agree with absolutely everything you said. And I think in hindsight, so would I. Um, I mean, I didn't get a choice that matter. I had um, I had to make a choice of going back into corporate, um, you know, corporate law or um, start something different. And I was going through a divorce at the time. So, but I do know that um, 
if you are if you are in a full time employment uh, or you know either through self you know because you have another business uh, which could be a lot of people are just I think they're not really into business they just they are they're self employed and they still mm-hmm. are employed they're just employed for themselves so yeah. some of these businesses are really businesses they're just self employment so if you are self employed or you are in corporate um, America or corporate world anyway then have a plan I think what I'm listening to you when I'm hearing from you is have a plan have an exit plan so. When, you know, as um, Jim Rowan said, if you fail to plan, you, you know, you plan to fail. So if you actually have a plan of how long it's going to take you to um, get to a certain level of income on a monthly basis or have certain amount of reserves in, in, in your bank account, so you're not doing work that you don't want to do just for the sake of having money in your bank account, then you're in a much better position. Plus, you can work from a, a space of abundance rather than lack and scarcity when you're like, oh, I need to, you know, you, you go into the survival mode, which actually makes you make more mistakes, by the way, than had you a better plan and you're in, in the thriving mode and like, oh, let me try it, let me try it. And then you can actually fail fast. There's a there's a phase, phase by, I think, uh, I can't remember, you know, who says that more often, it might be Jim, Jim Rowan, that he said, you know, if you want to fail, fail fast, fail multiple times and fail quickly, because the quicker you fail, the quicker you realize how, you know, what not to do, and then you can do the right things. And I yes. totally agree with that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it does have, it does help to have a supportive partner and um, a safety net. And then the Thanks. next thing I think would be courage. <laughs> Take the courage and the yeah. plunge. Yeah, definitely fail fast and fail often because I think we get scared of no's or failure. But in reality, unless you quit, you you're not you, failing. Exactly, you have you haven't failed. Yeah, until you've until yeah. you actually stopped, you never failed. It's just lessons and, and one more way of not doing it that way. So let's try another way. Exactly. I'm also glad that you brought up exit strategy because I believe if business owners start with the exit of their business in mind, then they would also build better businesses. Yes. So when you're starting a business, like asking your asking yourself, you want to make X, Y, Z per month. So what, why, what's that going to do for you? What's next after you do that? And then really thinking about why you're starting your business. Are you starting your business? Cause you want to stick it to your boss and you think you could do better or you just want to be out from underneath corporate America, or maybe you want more time freedom, go read the e-myth because you're probably not going to have time freedom for the first two years while you're getting stuff going. But like really thinking about, okay, so you build this business, everything goes great. So what, what are you Mm going to do? Are you going to sell it? Are you building a lifestyle business? Are you building a legacy business? Are you building a business that you want to leave to your kids? Um, Like really understanding what your long-term plan is with your business. Like, is it just providing the resources to have a really great life? Or are you trying to build an asset that you can sell for tens of millions of dollars? And I know that might sound overwhelming and life will change undoubtedly in the time between you start and whenever you exit. But here's the thing that I know for certain, everyone exits their business. It just might not be on your terms. So if you know that like you want to build a lifestyle business versus a legacy business, you can you approach them differently. And then knowing, you know, I would like to retire at 65 or whatever it is, knowing that and being flexible with how it happens is going to ensure that you really do build something that you want that will pay dividends back to you instead of being something that you look back and say, gosh, I wasted a lot of time and energy and now it's not worth as much as I wanted, or now I don't have somebody to take it over or it can't work without me. Mm. And yeah, hundred percent. And I think as I've, I've moved on to other businesses and I have multiple businesses, as I've gone head on uh, into M and A's, that's the first thought with my head. Okay. So if I'm buying this business, what's the purpose behind it? I don't want to be running it forever. I don't want another job. What's my reason for buying? What's my, um, what's my motive for maintaining it what do I want to do with it and when will I exit and that's been the primary concern before even purchase the business before even you know once somebody interests me even before negotiations sometimes during negotiations sometimes after negotiations but it's it's a primary concern before I buy a business how I'm going to sell this business or how I'm going to exit from this business and I think that's very important well on that note we'll wrap this this segment up because we'll ask you more questions in money talkies but for now um wrap up so do you have any parting comments for somebody listening and thinking this sounds great you know Lauren you've done amazingly well you know you went from you know being uh, you know qualifying as a doctor to actually now working on businesses as a doctor for businesses 
how, how can I do this? What can I, you know, how can I even start thinking about this? What's the first step that I would take? Mm. The first step I would say is know thyself. So um, I would have gotten a lot farther, a lot faster had I been much more clear about what my unique talents are. And um, this is like a tiny, tiny rant, but uh, schools traditionally penalize people for having a B or a C because you're not great at those subjects. When in reality, when you're an entrepreneur, you need to let those subjects go. Let somebody else do those and find what you're really going to excel at. And I think so much of the way that we've been conditioned in schools is to be kind of mediocre at a lot of things. Mm. So know thyself, get reconnected to what really lights you up, where you feel like the hours fly by that you feel confident in and build a business around that because the right people will show up to tell you how to do it when you're able to stay in your lane and go 80 miles an hour. Awesome. Awesome. So on that note, we're going to wrap this up. Lauren, tell us, how can we find you on the internet? How can we connect with you? Mm. The best place to connect with me since I'm already in your ear is on my podcast, The Biz Doctor. Otherwise, we have some great resources uh, for you at goldenkeypartnership.com. I'm also on LinkedIn and Instagram. Um, My Instagram handle is it's Lauren Goldstein and LinkedIn. It's just my name, Lauren Goldstein. You'll see me in a red shirt. Um, Yeah, those are the best places. Wonderful. So if you are listening to us on a podcast, the links that Lauren has just mentioned will be in the show notes. And if you're watching us on YouTube, down below in the description section, we'll have all the links to do check her out and see how she can help you build your business. Um, We have to have you back on Money Talkies, um, Lauren. But today, thank you so much for being such an amazing guest and having a wonderful conversation. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for listening to me and Lauren today on Friday Feature. I will be back with another amazing guest finding out how they change their mind by changing their by how they do change their life by changing their mindset. Let's um let's connect again and until the next time we meet, this is Girl Khan signing off. Take care and bye for now. Bye everyone.